Hey everybody, I'm Elizabeth McSwan from Emac and Hedwig. In today's video, I'm going to be talking all about Eastern Screech Owls. Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to another Owl Project vlog. This is Owl Project vlog number two. If you missed my first project vlog where I talk about my new owl project that I'm going to be doing for the next few years. I will link that video in the description below. For this project, I'm going to be photographing all 19 species of North American owls. I'm going to be focusing on the eastern species for the first year, and then we'll see where it goes from there. Eastern screech owls are really cool owls. They are one of three screech owl species in North America, the other two being the Western screech owl, and there's also the whiskered screech owl. And these three species look very similar. There are, I think, some slight differences, which you can tell them apart by, but really I think what differentiates them the most is their range, kind of where you can find them, and also their calls, I think, are really going to be the deciding factors there. Between all the screech owl species, the Eastern screech owl has by far the widest range. You can just find them a lot more places, mostly in the U.S. Their range does extend into southern Canada and northern Mexico, but really the bulk of their range is in the eastern U.S., all the way from the east coast into the Midwest, like eastern Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, and through most of Texas. They're different, I think, from a lot of other bird species in that they come in a variation of colors. So you have this sort of very red, what is often called rufous, this sort of orangey, rusty red color. And then they also come in gray. For the gray birds that I've seen, their plumage does vary a little bit in terms of tones. I've seen gray Eastern screeches that are very much what I would consider a neutral gray. But then I've also seen ones that have a lot of warmer tones in their feathers and almost look a little bit brown. And even within their range, there's more color variation. On the western edge of their range, you're much more likely to find a gray bird than you are a red one. And they're also in the plain states a lot, a little bit larger and paler in color. And then when you get down in like the southern part of their range, say in Mexico, they get a little bit smaller and darker in color. So it'll be really interesting if I get to see some of those birds when I get out west next year to photograph the western species, to see if I can, uh, if I can get some photographs of eastern screeches in different parts of their range that look different than the ones I'm used to looking at here in the northeast. Eastern screeches have a very classic owl shape. They've got a very large head, a very, very stocky body with a relatively short tail, very broad wings, and cute little ear tufts that aren't really ears, but they kind of look like ears a little bit. Uh, similar to that of the great horned owl and the long-eared owl. Eastern screeches are definitely on the smaller end of the sort of owl size spectrum. They are about eight and a half inches tall with a wingspan of about 20 inches and they only weigh like six ounces, so they're pretty tiny and just basically balls of fluff and feathers. Like most owls, I think they're fairly opportunistic hunters and their diet can vary depending on what habitat they're in because screeches really have a wide range of habitats. They like a lot of, I think, open forested areas. I find a lot of the screech owls that I photographed in cemeteries. So that kind of environment where there are trees, but it's not really that dense, it's more open. But their diet, I think, mostly consists of large insects and small rodents and even small songbirds. They are pretty much nocturnal birds. They will kind of open their eyes during the day and be awake, but pretty much all of their activity happens overnight. And during the day, they roost in tree cavities, old woodpecker holes and things like that. They also nest in tree cavities. One really cool thing that I love about screeches is their ability to manipulate their body shape. So like a lot of other birds, they can puff themselves out really, really big and really get their wings up like this. And so they really appear a lot larger than they are. If they want to basically ward off some kind of potential threat. And that isn't so unique, I think, for bird species, whether birds are trying to appear larger and more threatening, or they're just puffing up their feathers to stay warm. But screeches also can get really, really tall and skinny. 
to basically shrink in size when they're trying to camouflage better into their environment. And their ear tufts get really, really V-shaped as opposed to more like their, I think their natural sort of neutral position is more kind of here, but they really get up like this, presumably to break up their head shape so that it looks a little bit less like a head and maybe more like a piece of a branch or something. It's just really cool to watch them do that. I've seen it a few times Usually it's not because of me, but it's because of some other kind of annoyance, whether it's a bunch of birds that are trying to mob it or something that have found it in its tree cavity, because birds will mob screech owls, just like any owl. Usually it's birds like blue jays and tufted titmice, chickadees, nut hatches, things like that. If they find a screech owl just kind of sunning itself in its cavity, they will start to make a lot of racket, which if you're out there in nature photographing and you hear a lot of birds making a big racket, it might not be such a bad idea to follow the noise and see what they're so upset about because it can often be something worth photographing, whether it's an owl or another sort of raptor. Screech owls are a threat to those birds, so there's safety in numbers. And so when they see one during the daytime, they try to pester it to either to basically get it to go away. And in my experience, usually screeches will just sort of duck down into their little cavity and come back out again when the birds have moved on. So that's a little bit of info about Eastern screech owls. I'm gonna talk a little bit now about my experience photographing screech owls, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about my goals for this project in regards to screeches. Out of all of the owls that I've had the privilege of photographing over the last few years, Eastern screech owls are by far the owl that I have photographed the most. I think I photographed, I wanna say 12 individuals. I don't, I don't know what it is about them. I just really love photographing screeches. I think what I love most about them is the challenge. Once you find a screech, they are fairly habitual and fairly predictable. In any given season, they'll come back to that same cavity over and over again. In my experience, usually their nesting spot is different from their winter roosting spot. So they will eventually leave wherever they are during the winter time and go wherever they're gonna nest. But within a season, it's fairly certain that once you find one, if you go back again, you'll find it there again a few times. When I first started photographing screeches, I was doing what a lot of people were doing, which was I was going during the day when the light was good and basically getting owls sleeping in tree cavities, like a lot of the time. I just quickly got a little bit bored of that. So I just stopped photographing them for a while and it wasn't until I went back to an owl that I had photographed before and I basically abandoned like any sense of any expectation. And I just thought, you know what? I just want to come and see what it does when the light dies, where it goes and what its behavior is like. The idea being that maybe I can get something of screeches outside of their tree cavity. So I went to one particular owl that I had photographed before. I didn't get any shots of the owl outside the cavity. It just wasn't interested <laughs> in that, which is... But what it, I did get was much more expressive shots of the owl before it left. Now, you know, the light's not really good. My shutter speed is a lot slower than I ever thought that I would be using, but it got me thinking about what was possible. If I just completely changed the way I photograph screeches from how I photograph almost everything else. And so I started to visit screeches in the evenings as they were waking up for their night of hunting and seeing what I could get and if I could get anything outside of their cavity. As I kind of gained more experience, I basically developed a technique to photograph them. And I would say I really developed this technique photographing this pair of screeches that lives pretty close to me, just around the corner that I found really almost by accident. I just figured, oh, you know, I'll check this, this cemetery that's close to me. And, and I was, I just happened to be kind of looking with my binoculars from my car window. And I realized that in one of the trees there, there was an owl. As it turns out, there were two owls in there. So in the winter of 2017, 2018, I visited those two owls as often as I could, and I was able to develop a trust with them. I was able to go from getting shots of them when they left their cavity from like really far away with them very small in the frame 
to them actually flying towards me when they left their cavity and perching just over my head about, you know, 10 or 15 feet or something above my head. And I really realized in that, in those moments of, of them finally kind of coming to me when they left their cavity, that they no longer saw me as a threat and that I had earned their trust. And that's something that is just really, really cool to get from a wild animal. I was able to get some shots that I'm really proud of and also other screeches that I photographed after that. I could figure out how to behave in such a way that I really could get um, interesting shots of screeches that aren't just another shot of an owl in a tree cavity and I could get something a little more interesting and I could sort of present myself as a non kind of threatening entity. So for the purposes of this project, my goals for the Eastern Screech Owl species is to definitely get shots of owls outside of their cavities and or get shots of two owls in the same hole, which is really tricky. The owls that I was talking about earlier that I photographed, I was there a few times a week for several weeks and I got shots of both of them in the same cavity one time. So it's really hard to get, but I would love to be able to get two owls in the same cavity. I would also like to get a nesting pair of screech owls and be able to take photographs of baby owls, baby screeches. I could definitely get photographs of screeches outside of their cavity. I'm fairly confident that I can get that, but it's going to be more challenging to get the two screeches in the same cavity as well as a family of screeches, especially one that isn't in a nesting box. I really don't want to photograph any owl in a nesting box. I would really love all the photographs that I get to be in natural cavities. So that's going to be a little tricky, but I'm up for the challenge. So that's all the information I have today about Eastern Screech Owls. I am going to be doing a video that taught that where I talk more specifically about how I photograph them and my process. So stay tuned for that. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. And if you want to learn more about this project and follow me as I photograph all the owls of North America, please consider subscribing to my channel. It would help me out a lot. Also, you can find me on Patreon for as little as $2 a month. You can get early access to videos like this along with a bunch of other really cool stuff. And you can also find me on Instagram. I post a lot of my work on Instagram. It's the best way to see it. So I hope you check me out over there. And until the next video, everyone, take care and happy owling. See you later. Bye.